Hello everyone. This is part four of our continuation on manifestation gifts. And we're at 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, of course, I do not want you to be uninformed. We should not be uninformed about these gifts. And I'm going to talk about this later, but it's interesting to note that a lot of times we are very uninformed about these gifts. Usually the people that teach about these gifts are people who are using the false version of these gifts. There are people that are money preachers and stuff. They like to talk about the spiritual gifts and not just the normal pastors who is more concerned about having people saved and, and the gifts is not what they put forefront. But they don't want us to be uninformed. So, first part, we talked about the manifestation gifts as a whole. Second part, we talked about the word of knowledge. And third part, we showed how word of knowledge and word of wisdom kind of combine when you're dealing with a word of, a word of wisdom. They don't always, but sometimes they combine. And uh, now we're going to talk again about a word of wisdom and knowledge combined. But <laughs> the other days is is so is so interesting is that I was going to a gas station and this woman saw me in uniform and she said, "Thank you for your service." And I was like, "Oh, but before I could say anything, she says, "And call your mama." I'm like, "What?" Thank you for your service and call your mama. And I, I left the gas station. I was like, how does this lady know? I haven't called my mama in a while. We've been kind of up and down lately. And, and yeah, we've been kind of up and down lately. But how does she know I hadn't called my mama? That lady probably did not know what she just did and how impactful that was. Um, she just felt this pull to say that to me. She felt this pull, didn't know anything. So I called my mama and we had a great talk. We had a great talk. I didn't know when I should call her again. I knew that we had a little falling out and don't know how to patch things up. But that lady's word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and possibly a word of knowledge led me there. That's how God works sometimes. He tells someone to do something for you. Just like I talked about previous in verse a day, there was a, a time in my singleness, uh, and I, I was I was in, in my apartment and I was crying, I was tearing up, and out of nowhere, a person who I barely talked to, I never even met. Okay, let me admit, it was someone that I was trying to talk to online, uh, but we really didn't connect like that. She sends me Isaiah 41.10 and Isaiah 48, uh, in Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, which says something to the effect, even you scoot weary and get tired but the Lord shall renew their strength. And it says, the Lord's hand shall uphold you. I don't remember exactly, but that's all she texts me. IS 4110, IS 402831. She just got either a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. Well, definitely a word of wisdom and, and possibly a word of knowledge. That is how the Lord works at times. But let me show you, because I don't want y'all to ever just take my word for it, okay? Never just take a man's word for it. Look in the scripture to see where it matches. So let's go to Act 9. Acts 9. And Acts 9 is dealing with Paul when he first realized that he was doing wrong. Mind you, Paul's been killing thousands of Christians. He was 
the one of the greatest Christian slaughters right after Yeshua died and resurrected right at that time. So, but Saul, still breathing th threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Israel. Now, as he went on his way, so Paul had plans of doing bad to some Christians, some more. But now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Immediately with this, 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 this light that came down and stuff and this power that he felt, it was undeniably God. He knew that. So he knows it's God. He even says it in his words, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, but rise and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. The men who are, were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. So he's completely blind. Now watch what the Lord is going to do next. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man named Saul. So he's giving him specific instructions. He's saying, Look, there's going in the future, there's going to be a man named Saul up there. For behold, he is praying. He's going to be praying. And he has seen a vision of a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So he just gave him directions. He has seen a, 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 in a vision a man named Ananias. He just gave him a word of knowledge that he dreamed about you, Ananias. And then he gave him instructions and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So lay your hands on him and through my power, a word of wisdom, and to give the healing, I might add. My power, he will be able to see again. But Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. See, Ananias still has fear about this, this tasking. And that's how it, it just shows any gift that we get is from God. Any gift we get is from God. We might even fight. Like, no, I got word of wisdom. I don't know about doing that. No. The Lord talked to him, though, and comforted him. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of, of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house and laying hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So all these things came to pass and immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized and taking food, he was strengthened. That is another thing of how a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge come together. Also, don't forget there is also faith as a manifestation gift, the gifts of healing as a manifestation gift in this as well. So four things, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and we saw faith in there because the Lord let him know that he could do it and he didn't doubt it whatsoever. And we saw the gifts of healing as the Lord allowed him to be a conduit to do the Lord's healing. Mind you, again, these are not your normal, like just fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering. These are not your normal 
gifts that God gives you when you're born, like the gift of teaching and stuff, just to, just to, just different gifts you're born with. These manifestation gifts come and go when the Lord sees fit. They come and go when the Lord sees fit. And uh, so it's not an everyday thing. You don't just go, I got a word of wisdom for you. 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 No, I got a word of knowledge for you. I got a word of knowledge for you. I got a word of knowledge for you. I got, no. They come and go as the Lord sees fit to edify, to build up the body of Christ. And mind you, your pride, my pride could not handle having these, many of these gifts and having these gifts all the time. Look up verse a day, 230 to see how we must humble ourselves after doing things like this. But yes, we will continue tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And thank you for showing us how these things work in your word, Father, in your scripture. May we not have to rely on any man's testimony, but your word. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.